live from Santa Clara, California. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Next Work 2015. Brought to you by Juniper Networks. Now your host, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley, in the shadow of Levi Stadium here, Santa Clara Marriott, for a special CUBE presentation of Nextwork Juniper's Customer Summit. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angel, and Stu Miniman, an analyst at Wikibon.com, and this is our flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Jason Grass, Intervision Systems President and co-founder. Welcome to The Cube. Great, thank you. So you guys are a big partner at Juniper. You've been in the integration business for many decades. You're the founder, congratulations. Um, local, Santa Clara, so that's awesome. Um, you guys have interesting perspective because you're on the front lines. You deal with customers and you live and die by them writing the checks to do good work and having profitability, right? So I want to, my first question is, in this sea change that you're experiencing right now, we're seeing the end of the client server era, but those solutions aren't being ripped and replaced. They're being extended to the cloud and all kinds of new stuff in the data center. So first question is, what's your take on this transformation from a customer standpoint? Are they wanting more package solutions? How's the economics? Is business good? Share some perspective. Well, obviously the, the market is changing, um, and it's, it's not just a, a, an overnight change. Um, it's, it's more of an evolution versus a revolution. So I think we're seeing a bit of a transformation of where things are going. Although maybe the client server business is kind of you know, diminishing, um, there's a lot of opportunities to take advantage of hybrid cloud, cloud models, um, in, in various different capacity requirements um, that's going on in the marketplace. And yeah, you're right, we've been doing this a long time. We've been in business 23 years in the Silicon Valley. Uh, I founded InterVision along with another guy back uh, in the early 90s. And um, we've been a Juniper partner since uh, 1999, almost the inception of Juniper. Um, but I remember back in the days when things first started, uh, you were literally routing on a Sun workstation, right? So um, there has been a transformation and there'll continue to be transformations. And the nice thing about being in the channel is you can really take advantage of a lot of different opportunities and it's not necessarily tied to vendor technology. So you can really work on, you know, as trends go, we can move with the trends. Talk about the JSTAC and why did you guys build that solution? We built the JSTAC because there's really a requirement out in the marketplace now to have reference designed architectures, validated design architectures. It kind of was brought to bear with, uh, with EMC and NetApp and some of the consortiums they had with you know, Juniper's competitors and VMware. Um, VCE. VCE, <laughs> uh, FlexPod. We were an early adopter of FlexPod and we became very successful at that. And we recognized the opportunity that the marketplace needed for um, a converged infrastructure design that was repeatable and could be validated and could be supported. And so InterVision decided to create its own, sat on the Juniper Advisory Council. We talked about it a lot as a community with Juniper and Juniper has chosen to go to the market with their channel partners to build these versus going to market with a strategic alliance like a VCE type uh, opportunity. So Jason, uh, there, there was an announcement here at the show that you guys were involved in. C can you really unpack for us the MetaFabric architecture? You know, what does that mean? How does it relate to the JSTAC that you guys have had for a while? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, really, you know, the concept of a uh, virtual chassis of a single, you know, pane of managing, you know, a whole environment um, as it's if one switch, and then behind it, the actual fabric itself, um, really gives you a lot of flexibility because of the spine leaf technology to be able to scale out and create kind of a horizontal scale of, uh, of the whole converged infrastructure, which really is, is, is a fabric, a compute layer, and a storage back end. Okay, and kick, what options are available uh, from the compute and the storage standpoint? Um, well, the way that we've built it with Juniper, um, there's a multitude of options. Um, we, we've, we've validated and tested it with uh, most of uh, Dell's server lines, um, HP server lines, including there's some uh, ability to do it with you know, their blade server technology. Uh, theoretically, it could probably be uh, uh, built with uh, UCS as well, although we're, we haven't you know, tested that extensively. Um, but you know, there's a lot of different flexibility and options, and I think 
that solution fits nicely for the customer that does not want to be pigeonholed into you know single vendor solutions or single alliance solutions where you know you have limited choices so there's it just gives the customer a lot of flexibility in the way that they're able to build out their infrastructure and make changes along the way one of the things about disaggregation that's interesting is that for the high end customers yeah. it's phenomenal I can decouple the hardware software, have a software centric view from security, network, yeah. all that great stuff. But then you start getting into, the, I won't say SMB, it's kind of an over overused term, but customers that want turnkey hardened solutions, well they're all hardened, but like, you know what I'm saying, turnkey. That's where the, the partners, you guys can come in on the integration side where you got building blocks. You don't right. want to, there may be some tuning behind the scenes, but to the customer, it's a product, <laughs> right? So talk about that dynamic because that's an opportunity potentially for the channel partners and the integrators because you can have a core competency and roll it out as a product, someone who's not staffed up with a zillion network guys. Talk about that dynamic. Is it an opportunity yeah. and how do you see that? Yeah, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for channel partners like InterVision because essentially you're, you're able to um, marry those different technologies together, okay? And you don't have the same limitations that you do as you know single vendors. So if you're Juniper, yeah, you make great you know, switches, routers, and you know, security appliances, and now layers of software and the decoupling, but you're still not addressing the compute layer, you're still not addressing the storage layer, right? So I think the channel community that, that can get this right, you actually create more stickiness and value to the customer. Um, so I think it gives us opportunities to go in and really drive it, you know, what really I think is the underlying value of what customers want out of uh, technology partners in general, which is they really want to solve business needs and we're just enabling them to solve those business needs through the use of technology. So I think more decoupling, um, less, uh, uh, you know, ability to tie, you know, to, you know, strict hardware and software, I think that's a good thing. You know, there's been, you know, many opportunities over the years where uh, best in breed, open source, you know, things that, you know, have really allowed, you know, the market to evolve. And I think at the end of the day, it gives the customers more flexibility to build what they want to build, not what a particular vendor thinks they should build. Talk about the SDDC, Software Defined Data Center and Hybrid Cloud. What's your prediction in that market? Well, it's, it's funny that you should say that because we actually, um, about a year ago, started kind of branding what we're doing out in the marketplace based on SDDC. You know, depending on who you talk to, I think um, you know, VMware originally coined the term, but it's kind of evolved into, I think, the all-encompassing you know, converged architecture of, of you know, what potentially is a data center along with the orchestration tools and everything that you know, allows you to you know, do provisioning and you know, throttle back and forth with you know, private and hybrid clouds. I think there's a there's a huge opportunity. Um, it's you know multi-billion. I think uh, at one point I've seen it as high as you know a forty billion dollar opportunity right now. So I think if if you know you can build solutions to address you know an SDDC enabled environment, I think that's really what customers want to hear now. Is SDDC a product in itself? No, it's more of a conceptual way of you know going out in the marketplace at this point. What's the management platform you guys use? I mean, obviously you have to deal with multi-vendor. Yeah. So management's a big issue. Talk about the management side of it, the, uh, you know, the tooling and the platforms. What's, uh, what's the preferred choice for you guys? Well, if you look at what's going on with you know, management tools and orchestration tools, I mean, it's, it's, it's still really being driven by you know, the layer above the hardware and you know, virtualization and you know, VMware and OpenStack and then tools on top of that, like we're working with a cloud provisioning tool company, it's a startup called ITAP, uh, that allows you to provision back and forth from, you know, such as AWS. So, you know, and then you go a bit of like storage back in, like our initial J stack and a lot of our testing was centered around CDOT with uh, network appliance NetApp. And, um, you know, they have their own uh, management tools. So I think there's a certain extent where we're still kind of um, held in the, in the, you know, the particular technologies management tools, but they're starting to become some really exciting um, tools out there that are sitting on top of that that are allowing you to do more provisioning, more allocation, and I think those um, are really going to enable kind of to see the full SDDC kind of concept and model come together, and that's really what we're trying to do is take advantage of that, but it's, you know, there, there isn't like a one size fits all with, you know, currently with management tools. Yeah, so Jason, if we look at a lot of the conversion, even the hyper-converged environments, it tends to be heavily storage driven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what opportunity do you see to kind of enhance the networking uh, side of kind of the conversion, hyper-converged environments? Well, I mean, obviously with, you know, the stuff that Juniper's doing, you know, with Metafabric, you know, that gives you a, a lot of, um, 
flexibility with you know scale out, right? So if you if you take a step back and you say, okay, the the traditional way that it's been, you know, a reference architecture, validated design architecture, uh, like an EMC or like a NetApp, um, you know, they they have driven that into the marketplace and they've created an opportunity that I think you know limits yourself to you have particular technologies and you can build out and continue to you know stack on those technologies but you know I think what Juniper is trying to do is is decouple that okay and make it more flexible because they're choosing not to really go to market with a particular uh, storage manufacturer in the back end I think their opportunity is really to be everything other than than those, you know, and there's a lot of um, uh, workload type scenarios where I think the customer is looking to have that flexibility and not looking to have an architecture driven from a storage back end perspective, um, mm -hmm. along with a certain select amount of vendors. Now the flip side of that is, you know, there is some validation with uh, what certain types of customers want, sometimes in regulatory issues, banking, uh, healthcare, where there's some level of comfort to have uh, more of that value design and less of kind of the open, you know, decoupling. And um, so I think, you know, there, there's opportunities for everybody, but I think Juniper has a particular grid solution and the type of announcements they're making lends itself towards, uh, you know, success in that area. So I think that, you know, they continue to build on that and leverage their channel partners and leverage their customers and drive this into the market. I think they're going to see some success in that area. The, the other area uh, I'm curious about is, you know, how much is kind of the public cloud fitting into the conversations that you're having? And do you see an opportunity for the channel to be able to, you know, offer both sides of the, the hybrid solution? Yeah, I think obviously the public cloud's fitting into a huge piece of the conversation with all of the customers. So I think the opportunity really is to uh, to build hybrid clouds um, and management tools that allow you to you know, manage your public cloud and also manage your private cloud and bring those together to create hybrid clouds. And I think you know that that's truly the you know where we see the direction of SDDC and what the customers are looking for. Jason, thanks for coming by and sharing your insight with theCUBE. Congratulations on your success. <laughs> Quick question for you at the end of the segment, uh, to give you the last word. What's the future for you guys? I mean, obviously all this change is opportunity. Yeah. Um, give us a quick peek into the future vision for you guys. Well, I think we're going to continue down what we talked about today. Um, you're going to see more and more, you know, hybrid type cloud. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, if InterVision um, and, and the ecosystem are successful, uh, we'll continue to build on uh, you know, a continued spend in this area, and it's only up and to the right. Um, technology is, is not slowing down, and I think there is a tremendous opportunity for uh, everybody to share, share in that growth over the next you know, 10 years. Rising tide floats all both ecosystems, the key to success in open. This is theCUBE, we're open, we're sharing that data with you. We'll be right back with more after this short break live in Silicon Valley for Juniper's Networks Customer uh, Summit, we'll be right back.